to go to school with you today on this Sabbath. Why? In the old time, during the time of Christ, the disciples, the synagogue was not only a place of discourse and reading out of the law. Okay. The synagogue was also a school of learning on the Sabbath where our children would go in at the age of 12 and began, especially the men, and began to learn the ways of the Most High and the earth and our, and our pur purpose as a chosen people opposed to the ways of the Gentiles. But something happened. As you all know, we being the children of Israel is in a desolation at this point. We, we have been taken down and controlled by Gentiles by default, okay, learn Gentile ways, began to worship Gentile idols, and even follow Gentile holy days. Now, this is how they trick you. They call it in America or in the Western world, holy days. See, holy days. Make you think of something happy or they just changed the pronunciation. But lo and behold, brothers and sisters, they're holy days. I is synonymous with why. See, see how they trick you? See, Satan is a deceiver. He know, that, he know the importance of the holy days set apart for the Israelites. And outside of the God of Israel, all the nations are worshiping Satan under holy days. And I'm not just making a statement here. I'm not just making an accusation. We're going to bring you the proof today on this Sabbath and what impact it has on all of us today. See? Holidays. See, and even in our religion, right, in religions today, I grew up a Christian, right? I grew up celebrating Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, in connection with who I thought was God in Christ. Okay? I'm going to show you today the trickery in doctrine that made me believe that coming up as a Christian. And I'm talking about my family have generations of Christians going back all the way back to the slave trade. All right? So the pagans who have enslaved us gave us their holly days. Now, here's the confusion that, that, that goes along with being a Christian, which I grew up being. Okay. Think about this. I was celebrating the holidays given to me by those who've enslaved me. But in the Bible, the same Bible that was given to us during slavery, said don't deal with it. The same Bible had holy days that God gave his people. See, so here's the confusion. I'm reading about holy days that God gave, yet following holy days that men gave us through tradition during the time of our desolation or destruction or curse. How is it, how is it the Gentiles can dictate to us our traditions, you will find out today. See? Now, am I here just to accuse on the Sabbath today? No. We're here to show you the right thing to do according to the Bible, to fall on the righteous side of grace. Okay? We're not just going to point out the problem without giving a spiritual, biblical, brothers and sisters, solution. Why? We've just entered into really the first month of seasons for holidays, according to the Bible. Memorial blowing of the trumpets, which links to the trumps of Christ. See, that's a schedule. The holy days are, are merit in the heavens for prophecy. But yet, I'm not following or know anything about the importance of the memorial blowing of the trumpets in Christianity. See? After that, you have the Day of Atonement. I'm going to go through these a little later. Well, in the Old Testament at a holy day where once a year our sins were absolved or cleared, 
with a sacrificial lamb without blemish. That's mirroring or that's paralleling Christ being that lamb without blemish dying for our sins. Mm -hmm. How could I understand the impact of Christ's sacrifice if I didn't know about that holy day in the Old Testament? See? But I never heard anything like that in Christianity. So the only thing I knew that is that a good man came, died for our sins, but didn't know the impact of that. I didn't know that that was actually a law of atonement in the Old Testament and that only one people, the children of Israel, had that particular sacrifice mm. for absolving sin. I didn't know that. We never learned that. See? And they'll tell you in Christianity and churches, it doesn't matter. It's not important. All that matter is Christ and the Christ we teach you. Well, hold up. Come on now. You can't give me a Bible and say split it in half and ignore all of the prophecies in the Old Testament concerning Christ. That, that alone helped me as a what you would call student of the law or a person looking to find my way. The Old Testament will give me that education. To understand Christ, the disciples, the holy days, why the Most High was so mad at his people, why he brought judgment. Why? Because our people, the children of Israel, went away from our holy days or what this world call holidays. We're entering into the seventh month. Now, the elite powers understand, the, understand this. OK, they understand the power of worshiping and family coming together on particular days of the year. Okay? They understand the impact of this. Why? Because the God you serve empowers you, be it good or evil. So Satan has tricked you into inadvertently worshiping him for years. All right. It's a slow. It's, it's been a slow trans. What, what, what you would call a slow transformation into Luciferianism in this world. They set up Christianity to tear it down. The false Christianity to lead everyone into a Luciferian God. And at the end of it, you're going to realize that the God you've been serving in Christianity, Islam and all that was Lucifer or Satan the whole time. That was the plan. Set it up. Destroy it because it's false. So a doctrines will come and begin to tear it apart. And then by default, you'll begin to go into new age. Old Asian religions, satanic religions, or unbelief altogether. That was the plan. Now it's time to get back on course. Okay. No longer could anyone on the outside of me tell me it doesn't matter as an excuse. No, it don't matter to you. And if it doesn't matter to you, Turn it off. Go away. All right. You're not going to use that as an excuse. It must matter if breaking the commandments and, and high holy days of the Old Testament led to our slavery, led to our captivity. OK, so you don't come to me where it doesn't matter. And I'm going to show you the scripture, brothers and sisters. Christians have been using for years. I used to use that as a Christian. Total deception. They say, oh, let no man judge you in regard of a holy day, right? Let's go there real quick. Let's go into to the book of Colossians, the second chapter. This is the, when you talk about holidays and you start knocking down their Sunday worship, start tearing down, because why? Sunday is the worship of the sun. Okay? It's the first day of the week. In total, in total, Defiance of the Most High who gave man Sabbath. In respect, we're respecting the Most High. For what? That Sabbath day, that day of rest from the beginning. Before there was any such man as Moses, he hollowed the seventh day in creation. So Satan had flipped it around and said, well, Christ rose on Sunday. Liars. And if he did rise on Sunday, which he didn't. Because when Mary and Mary and the other sister came to the sepulchre, the rock was already moved on the first day. Mm -hmm. If they want to put it that way, 
So he wasn't, he didn't rise on the first day. That's a lie. That's a lie, brothers and sisters. They're moving everything towards the sun and worship of the sun because the Egyptians did it. The Babylonians did it. The first worship of Sunday, S-U-N, day, was a worship when the Tower of Babel was built under Satan. And they gave all the workers of, 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 the, of this tower, Satan's tower, into heaven, his technology into heaven. They gave them rest on Sunday. The first day of the week in defiance of the most high God, the most high smoked and destroyed that tower, that building and all these nations, these Gentiles, they did what they dispersed, taking their Babylonian worships into their respective areas with new languages. That's where you get the religions of the world from a smited tower, a smited technology, Satan promising with an oath to go back into space, NASA. In preparation to fight against the Most High God and, and Christ. So through this religion that was developed, political and otherwise, science and all, all that, they were in one mind, one language, one understanding, in defiance of the Most High God. Okay? Through that political system, they've, they've did that same system, they've done that same system up into our time. And through that, worships and traditions began. Okay, they made Nimrod a god to be worshipped, the son of Astoreth, the, the virgin child to be worshipped. Okay, that's where all that came from. It had nothing to do with Christ. It happened at the Tower of Babel. Okay, now I'm going to go there. We're going to break it all the way down here. See, we're different. See, I'm not a Gentile. I don't have anything against Gentiles. Okay. But I'm not a Gentile. So a Gentile can't tell me it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter to you because the most high God didn't give your forefathers the law, the law. That's why it doesn't matter to you. It doesn't matter to you because your people haven't suffered a curse of captivity for breaking the laws of the Bible. So that's why it doesn't matter to you. But it matters to me. It matters to those who are suffering the curse and are under your foot, the Gentile's foot, based on now following your holidays. It has nothing to do with my forefathers. So why should I follow it? And even our people in ignorance, they'll go back into the goddess of fertility and all that in Africa and all that and say, well, guess what? There was a goddess of fertility in Egypt where black people were or in Africa where black people were. What's up with you with this black people thing? OK, we, we have suffered for following those gods. I don't care what color they are. OK. So don't give me this because there's a goddess of fertility in Africa and Egypt. It belongs to us. I'm not an Egyptian. And guess what? I'm not an African either. Okay? I'm not from the seed of Ham. Neither are you. We're the children of Israel. And the Most High will continue to destroy us, smite us, allow us to be destroyed by Gentiles if we continue to follow Gentile ways. It's just that plain and simple. You want to know why we're, we're suffering? You want to know why the nations are destroying us? Well, that's the reason why. We have forgotten our God. We have failed to the Gentile gods. We've acknowledged them. And by acknowledging their God, they have placed the other nations over you as gods you serve. We've tried it every other way. There's only one path left. One path left. So let me get back to the deception of Christi Christians, because one thing I hate about dealing with a Christian is how dismissive they are with key points. Mm. OK, they don't know and they don't care the, to know. The only thing they care is about the blood of Jesus. You don't know about the blood of Jesus or Christ, his true name, Yeshua. You don't know about his blood because his blood was prophesied out of the Old Testament. When you look at the Day of Atonement, which is being celebrated soon in a few days, it's in September. That's a high holy day that was given to us in the Old Testament that foreshadowed Christ being that blood. So now we do the Day of Atonement in remembrance of who? Christ, who shed his blood on Calvary. I can understand what the atonement was because our forefathers did it once a year in the Old Testament as a holy day. 
I'm going to show you the deception. You tell a Christian, well, hold up, hold up, hold up. The Bible, nowhere in the Bible does it say follow Sunday worship. Nowhere. Not one place. Well, they broke bread on the first day of the week. Okay, I can show you where they broke bread on the second day, the third day, the fourth day. Breaking bread means we all come together, we fellowship and eat. What does that have to do with the Lord's Sabbath he gave us? You see the deception? They'll move the conversation to breaking of bread. When I break bread every day, then they'll say, well, hold up. If I follow Christ every day because Christ is my Sabbath, I'm following the Sabbath. Well, okay. That's another deception. I didn't ask you what day you follow Christ. Okay. That, that's another deception. Who cares how many days? The, the, the Most High said, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. That has nothing to do with what you do personally every day. That's another diversion. See? This is a diversion. They don't want to tell you right out. Well, in history, the Gentiles were worshiping Satan on Sunday. Okay? That was a worship to the, to the goddess, a star. And the God, a God man, Nimrod, under Satan, the original Trinity, to build the technology in Earth, ancient Babylon, to go out in space and fight against God and the angels. Like, who would go to, go to that church if they told you that? So they must deceive you or be dismissive altogether. See? Now, I'm going to cover a lot of points today. Today. I'm going to show you even... Satan is so diabolically, <laughs> I would say almost diabolically genius. How he set this up to funnel all religions and all science and, and from the political standpoint and all that and funnel everything and all religions into him. Even Celtics, pagans and all that, they all are worshiping the same thing. All of them, Christians, pagans, Satanists, uh, 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 Muslims, uh, Buddhist, all of them. They're really worshiping the same thing. And see, and that's the secret science in masonry. OK, they believe they have no higher knowledge. Why? Because right out, they learn through stages, through degrees, who their Lord is and how he's a Lord over this society or that society or that society. And then at the pinnacle of their degrees, they find Yabulin, Yah, which is Satan. Okay? So when they see brothers calling on Yah, they, they laugh at you because they, they, they look at you and say, okay, you think that's the God of the Hebrews. But they know in high degrees that's Satan. See? So why are we breaking this down? Because we want to reveal the truth to brothers and sisters, whether you hear or forbid. We're going to reveal this truth, okay? And through this truth, you can make an educated spiritual decision. And now you can't use ignorance as an excuse. You can't say you haven't been shown today. Ignorance will no longer be your excuse. So just because you look the other way <laughs> doesn't mean a truck isn't coming, okay? Okay, you can't hide from what's coming. You can't dismiss it anymore. So let me give you first again, and we're going to hit these scriptures one at a time. Hit, 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 hit them one at a time. But I wanted to set this up to let you know exactly what you'll be dealing with today on this Sabbath. We're going to school. Okay. What are we dropping today? We're dropping time and holy days. Okay. Time and holy days. How they mesh one and the same. How we should be now looking to follow the true holy days according to the Bible and Christ. See, Christ married the Old Testament. His sacrifice was on Passover. Why? He was the Passover lamb. You don't understand that if you don't know what Passover is in Leviticus 23. The Holy Spirit came down seven Sabbaths from the Passover, which is Pente. So the Holy Spirit came down on what? First fruits. Who's the first fruits that, that belong to Christ? His disciples. The Holy Spirit came down on them on a holy day. So everything, the time and schedules of the earth linked to the heavens are holy days. Mm -hmm. High 
understanding. And the Gentiles have deceived you and have thrown you a, a curve by saying, follow holidays. Well, that's their forefathers. We're different. We are different. What makes us different? Hold that. I'm going to get that. Hold Colossians. Get, get Deuteronomy 7 and 6. We are different. Okay. We don't eat swine. We don't deal with unclean things. We don't make an excuse for sin. We are a people of law. We are different. Heathens operate like heathens. They're dismissive. Well, they don't care. Do as thou wilt. Right? Claiming, well, if I do something, you know, as long as they don't hurt another person. Brothers and sisters, the whole, every, everything in, in the earth is co connected. Don't make them make you believe anything differently. What another person does inadvertently affects you. It's all connected. So don't, don't, don't make them give you this story. Well, what I do in my own house doesn't matter. No, if you are training up a heathen in your house to be a rapist, it's going to affect the people in your neighborhood. Okay. A homosexual, a liar, a thief, whatever. So it's all connected. Don't, don't come, come with me, well, to each his own. It doesn't work that way. Everything is connected. Okay, the only thing we can do to shield ourselves or have a hedge is use the power of Christ, Yeshua, and follow the law. Right? This, this is what makes us special. See, this is why they don't, and they don't want you to read this in the Bible either, either. Oh, don't worry about that old stuff. Just follow Christ. You don't know Christ without the Old Testament. He's a fulfillment of it. Right? Read Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So the Lord made many people. But the children of Israel, who he gave his laws, statutes, and commandments to, are the holy people. They are hallowed unto God. Read. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. To be a what? A special people unto himself. Unto himself. So out of all people, he chose one from the beginning. Now, these people have separate laws. See? So with that choosing comes what? Responsibility. If you're going to be the people of God, you can no longer operate as heathen. And we just, and we read Deuteronomy. This is Israelites just coming out of Egyptian captivity. We know what heathens were. We, 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 we operated and seen how they, they, they worship different gods and all that. So we knew what not to do. Now, Astarith, who, who was in, in, in uh, Egypt, Isis, Horus, Osiris. These are all ancient Babylonian worships. Back then, the traditions back then were the same as we have today. It was just under different names. I'm going to go there. So we are a special people to the Most High God. The Most High God have chosen Israel, read. To be a special people, read. Unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So, with this knowledge, see? No Asian or Japhetic person can come to me and say, be a Buddhist. I don't get they say, well, there's, there, there, there's similar things in all religion. It's similar. It's about being nice. And uh, listen, listen, I can't understand that. That's not the traditions of my forefathers. OK, it works for you. So when your God, wor your worshiping comes down, you're going down with it. OK, don't try to pull me into your Asian Garbage. I don't want your yoga. I don't want none of that. Okay, it's all evil. It's wicked. It's deceitful. And I don't care what type of chi music you you play behind it. Okay, 
I don't need your martial arts. I, we already know how to fight. Because all everything they do links to these gods. Mm-hmm. Okay? It links to these gods. They have their religion politically and societally all intertwined into one. So they'll give you, you think your child is just learning martial arts. No, right. they're learning the God that come with certain stances and all that. All those stances they do are Buddhas. Mm-hmm. Even in yoga, all those, all, all those meditations are Buddhas. Mm-hmm. How you have to stand with your legs crossed and how you have to stand up and all that. Yes, it's good exercise, but guess what? It's standing in an idol or a God that enters you. It's a connection with the invisible. Same way as, you know, if, if the Romans or pagans or the Roman Catholic Church try to come to me with Christmas and all that now. I'm like, listen, keep that. All right. You people, you Edomites are ruling over us because we follow that mess. You're not going to trick us anymore and then be dismissive. Let me show you how they're dismissive. Let's go to Colossians real quick. Colossians chapter 2. Verse, I started 14. Come on. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. So they'll say that Christ blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Now, the only ordinance that ordinances that was against Israel was what? Death. See? Because it's not against you to follow the Most High and reap the benefits when he gave us the law, statutes, and commandments. That's not against you. The only part of the law that was against us was death. So his death, Christ's death, blotted out the death that comes with breaking the law. Through that, now, if I were to break a law in the Bible, or according to a law in the Bible, there's not expedient or immediate death like the Old Testament. I have room to repent if it be his will. See? That's what he blotted out. He didn't say, okay, it's blotted out. Do what you want now. Do what you will now. Right. Like they're teaching in the Christian church. That's garbage. Read. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. That was against us. Which was contrary to us. Which was contrary because death was contrary to us. Read. And took it out of the way. He took that out of the way. Nailing it to his cross. What happened when Christ was nailed to the cross? Death. So that's the part of the law that was taken away from us. But the Christians will go here and say that everything in the Old Testament is blotted out. Well, I understand why evil abounds in the Christian church today. Now, it's totally understood. Because if it's blotted out, then then homosexuals can do, do do what they will. Pedophiles can do what they want in the churches. Marriage is no longer sacred in the churches. On and on and on and on. Because all those laws are contained in the Old Testament. And you can't say that Christ blotted out what you want to say was blotted out. Okay? If you show a sinner that, they're going to say, well, the sin I'm doing is blotted out too. And they'll continue in your church doing evil. See? See? The only part of the law is is blotted out, brothers and sisters, is the death. And that's only if you accept Christ's death. For those who don't accept Christ, you're not covered. So the wages of sin is death. You will die a short, you will live a short life and die. And not just your physical body. Your spirit will be cast in eternal torments. That's how it works. So only if you're under Christ is it blotted out. Because in Christ, you have space of grace for what? Repentance, to change. See, in Christianity, there's no repentance. Because if if there's no law, then you don't have to change anything. See? Come on. Verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. So now Christians will go here and say, well, you can't judge me in meat and drink. I can eat pork. I can eat shrimp, crab, or lobster. What are you talking about? Paul was a Pharisee, a Pharisee, a Hebrew of 
Hebrews. So he wasn't being judged for eating pork. So when you look at these, the meat and drink, you must now have the knowledge of the meat and drink that was within the parameters of high holy days in the Old Testament. See? Mm -hmm. He was telling the Pharisees and scribes, you can't judge me on the holy days under Moses. We now do the holy days under the Savior whose blood was shed for our sins. So that's what it says, let no man judge. So you have to go back to who the judges were when Paul was writing in, in the church of Colossia. The judges were the Pharisees and scribes. They had one way of dealing with the holy days. And the Israelites who converted under Christ had a different way of following the holy days. But the holy days stood nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Okay. They stood nonetheless. So he's, so Paul was telling the Pharisees, the givers of the law, you can't judge how we're doing Passover now. Because why? Christ is our Passover lamb. We will do it on the scheduled time, but it won't be like you, you're doing it because you're leaving out our sacrifice, Christ. Mm -hmm. We will follow the Sabbath, but no longer under, under Moses. We're going to follow the Sabbath under Christ, and we will use the grace given under Christ to do good on the Sabbath. You may look at it as working, but guess what? If your ox fall in a ditch, won't you get it out on the Sabbath? Our people are in a ditch. So I'm going to use my grace on the Sabbath to do good to help our people like Christ did. That's how Paul was teaching. He wasn't saying all the holy days and Moses and everything Moses gave is done away with. That's deception. Come on. Verse 16. Yes. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day. Now, here's the deception that come with Christianity. They say, the man can't judge me in respect of Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter. Well, that's total ignorance. If that's your response. That's total ignorance when it says, let no man judge you. Well, no can, man can't judge me on Christmas. Were the disciples talking about Christmas here? Were they talking about Sunday worship here? No. It was talking about in respect of the holy days that's actually written in the Bible. <laughs> so you can't even use this scripture for Christmas or Sunday. They're playing on your lack of knowledge and ignorance being that the only holidays you think exist are those that was given to you through tradition. Okay, Paul knew not to deal with the Sunday worship of Bacchus in Rome, which is synonymous to Sunday worship today. Paul knew not to deal with December 25th and all that. And see, I have to go into it because why? We're in the beginning that will now lead to the spirit of the season. So in Christ and in truth, brothers and sisters, we must now lay it all out for you because the spirit of sleep and this, and this spirit of sin that comes from the, these seasons will come upon the earth like it does every last quarter or fiscal quarter of Satan's year. Okay? Okay. So now we, we're pulling all the defense mechanisms Christians use, Christians use to worship Satan. Let no man judge you of what? In meat or in drink or in drink or in respect of an holy day or respect of an holy day or of the new moon. Now we know that the new moon or new months is what? Old Testament holy days. So Paul wasn't speaking of Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. Paul was speaking of the holy days contained in the Old Testament. See? Mm -hmm. Go on. Or of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, 
But the body is of Christ. But the body is of Christ. So when it says a shadow of things to come, all of those Old Testament holidays foreshadow Christ. So now Paul wasn't going to do a holy day. Exactly how it was done under Moses. Every holy day going forward was under Christ. And the judges who were the givers of the law, the Pharisees and scribes, could not judge them on it now. Mm -hmm. See? And if the Pharisees and scribes wanted to partake in this new path, they had to get baptized and relinquish their authority as the lawgivers to learn Christ and to learn the law again in righteousness. You understand? What you have there, Elder Lawyer? Oh, it's good. It's good. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 20. Before you go there, mm -hmm. let's go to Deuteronomy 32 and 21. We, were, we are a special people. Eventually, we fell as a people. Doing what? Following the ways of the Gentiles. Deuteronomy 32 and 21. Read it. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21. Come on. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not the most high. So we started putting new gods or Gentile gods for our God. Read it like you see it. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. We have moved him to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. Vanities is what? Of no value. Go on. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. See that? So since we put up a no God for him, I'm speaking of the children of the Bible, the children of Israel, the people of the Bible. We put up a no God for our God, like Buddha, like Allah, which is really Allah Palat, a female deity. Of ancient Persia. Allah is not a male deity. It's a female deity. It's the same goddess that the Romans are worshiping as Mary. But it's really not Mary. It goes way back to Babylon. See? So since we want to put up a fake god for him. He's going to do what? I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. He's going to put up a new people for him. See? So now you're going to have a new people calling themselves... Israel. See? You put up a no God for him, he'll put up a no people for you. Now these people being pagans will continue to do what? Exalt their gods. So when they get in position, they will still teach of Satan and his deception. Okay? They'll teach in their synagogues and all of that, but Satan is at the helm of their teachings. They'll continue to exalt their God. So the wicked are more loyal to their gods than, than we are, than Israel is. Okay? So what, what happened here? The Most High said, well, listen, I delivered you from Egypt. I took you from the hands of Pharaoh. I took you out of oppression and captivity. Worship me, and eventually you'll have all the promises of your father. You'll have what Adam was supposed to, to have received in the beginning. You must do these laws. And he put these laws understanding that there's other laws operating in the earth under fallen gods. Okay? That's our protection. To stay away from the, the wiles and the trickery of the Gentiles because by default, when we worship their gods, automatically the people that's connected to those gods become lords over us. See? So they tricked us. Come on. The rest of verse 21. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Come on. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell. So what happened? We put up a no God for him, and he put up a no people for us. A foolish nation, too. The people that are ruling this earth are fools. There's no, <laughs> what society are you going to have? The whole thing is foolish, okay? 
A, a lot of you, they, they make you believe the earth is spinning and, and revolutions and all that. Total garbage. The earth tilts on its axis, axles, okay? That's how the earth tilts. But the earth don't spin, okay? What's going on is the whole universe is moving around the earth, which is the center. That's what's going on. These fools made people believe that everything is spinning around the sun. Why? They're sun worshipers. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. The stars and all of that are, are dealing with revolutions around the earth. Like you see what's the spinning around an atom. They're really telling you without telling you that the, the whole universe are angels moving around the earth. Okay? These are fools. Who would make you believe that the earth came from, from nothing. That everything we see, total order came from chaos. To make you believe there's no God or a great power ordering everything. They're fools. They're fools. They're foolish. Who can, who can, they set up stu schools to make you stupid. Mm -hmm. Think about it. You go to school, you, you, you think you're going to school to be smart. No, you're going to school to be bone dumb. Dumber than a hammer you're going to school for. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they do in school is give you all these religious options out there. Persian, ancient Persian religion and that religion. They do that first to confuse you and throw you off. And then they'll, they'll teach another religion, evolution. Okay. They're fools. So we, we, listen, we're backing up from all that, okay? We say, listen, if y'all want to learn this stupidity in school and go in debt with, with this foolishness, foolishness they're teaching in there, then that's on you, okay? That's on you. Now, are there positive things? Yeah, teach me to read and write, but all that other foolishness is more so what? Social engineering. I don't need that. OK, I don't need social engineering and, un and unbelief as part of my educational growth. Come on, let's go. Let, let's go to uh, First Corinthians 10 and 20. Hold that before you get First Corinthians 10 and 20. Get me Hosea 8 and, eight and Hosea 9 and 17. OK. Hosea chapter 8. Verse 8, Israel is swallowed up. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles. Now they shall be among the what? The Gentiles. The Gentiles. As a vessel wherein is no pleasure. As a vessel wherein there is no pleasure. So eventually, our people began to follow the Gentiles. Right? And we be then eventually we suffered the curse. We were scattered amongst the Gentiles as a vessel wherein there is no pleasure. So you want to know why we're being trampled upon, shot? Okay. One of us can die and it's not even a story. It's not even on the news how, how precious life is. You want to know why? And every life is precious. But our, our, our life is worth nothing in this world. We are a vessel wherein there is no pleasure. We're suffering a curse. And I keep saying this, a curse, a curse, a curse. Why? So that we can deal with the reality concerning our condition and solve the problem. Come back to the most high. Come on. Hosea chapter 9, verse 17. My God will cast them away. My God will cast them away. Because they did not hearken unto him. They didn't listen. We could have just followed the holy days and followed what the Most High gave us. Read. And they shall be wanderers among the nations. And they shall be wanderers among the nations. Here's a wanderer. Well, let me go here and be a Nuwabic today. Oh, let, there's a, let me wander over here and become a Christian here. Oh, let me go over here and be a Muslim over here. See? Not once have I've, I've seen a Chinese person to look to convert to any black religion. Not once. <laughs> 
And I'm talking about the world's religions. Why is it that it's everyone else? We're being divided amongst everyone else and their, their beliefs. See? We're wanderers among the Gentiles. This is a lost sheep, a people without a God. But now the Most High during the time of awakening is doing what? He's given us what belongs to us. We need to hold that, that jewel precious. It, we've been looking for this for a long time. What is the holy days we should follow? Right? Who is our God? See? What did we fall from? See? So the Lord in, in his mercy, being that this is a generation actually, that resolves it all. He has given us an opportunity to come back from whence we fell. Okay? And that's why the truth is coming now. That's why the information, it's, it's, it's the most high God revealing his love to his people. Truth. So in order to get this truth, we must move the Gentiles and their beliefs and their, and their paganism and their foolishness out of our way. Okay? Gentile, that's good. We are the light to the Gentiles. Follow. Okay? No longer do we want to hear your foolishness or your holy days. Why? We're going to reveal what you're really following anyway today. It's foolishness. Why do you think the earth is, 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 is in total chaos and on its way down? Fools are running this, this earth. So no, we don't want to hear anything concerning your gods anymore, your worships. It's not even working for you. We are the light to the Gentiles under Christ. Follow. You don't have the light. You're walking in darkness because your Lord is the Lord of darkness. Okay? Come on. 1 Corinthians 10 and 20. Let's go into that New Testament now. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice... The things that the Gentiles sacrifice... Now, brothers and sisters, a sacrifice is what you eat. When something dies for your nourishment, guess what? That's a sacrifice. The things that the Gentiles sacrifice... So when they have holy days and food they eat, Right? The thing that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to who? They sacrifice to devils. They're really sacrificing to demons. There's a demon or God behind every worship of the pagans, of the Gentiles. They have no idea how to follow the true God. Their ancestors didn't follow the true God. They've been worshiping to, to demons. See? So when you see idolatry amongst the nations where they have different idols and different gods like in Egyptology and all these different, they, these are demons. So they do their holy days and traditions to these gods to empower them for what? For prosperity, to gain things of this world. They pray to these gods and you know what? These gods listen because this is Satan's world. See? Come on. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. Come on. And not to the Most High. And not to the Most High. It's not to God. It's to demons. Come on. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Come on. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You can't say you're down with the Most High God of the Bible. And be down with religions and, 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 and the understanding of Gentile worships. You can't do that and say you're down with the God of the Bible. You can't say, well, listen, I'm going to follow Christmas, even though Christmas is not in the Bible. And there's holy days to worship in the winter that's actually in the Bible. Okay? Stop lying or deceiving yourself. If it's not in the Bible, it's evil, it's wrong. Don't say, well, God is not going to judge me based on my tradition. Well, if your tradition is aligned with Satan, you will be judged. Okay? Well, it's about family for me. Uh, Christ is the reason for the season. Stop lying to yourself. Satan is the reason for the season. Come on. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot say you're down with the most high. 
and deal with the cup of devils. Because the same time you're following these traditions that will come up for the next few months, at night, 12 midnight, the witching hour, children will be getting raped and sacrificed. Innocent children. Okay? It's all a part of, of, of the Molochian or the Moloch worship. So it doesn't matter if you ignorantly partake in it. You're still partaking in it. That day is a day of much evil. Every holy day they set up, there's sacrifice and orgies and all types of uh, improprieties and evil going on. Incest, homosexuality, pedophilia, murder. And you notice on those days, certain holidays, what they call holidays, it's total calmness. There's a spirit that comes with this time of year, and I'm about, I'm about to go and do it. We are different. If the Gentiles want to do that, let them do it. And when the flood comes, like it did in the day of Noah, it will take them. Okay? Now, a lot of you out there who want to do the right thing will feel left out. You're going to feel, well, hold up. How is it that the, the world can have all so much fun? It's about family and Look, look, you know, it's about my family. How can this be wrong? And you will begin to envy or feel left out. You know what? That's okay too. Because the Bible tells us, let's go there. Let's go to Proverbs 3 and 31. So when th these feelings come on you during this season, when they come on you, Right? Go to Proverbs 3 and you read it. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Think of if, if Christ was living today. Would he celebrate Christmas? Would he be dealing with Sunday worship? Would he be dealing with Thanksgiving? The answers to, to all of them is, is an, an emphatic no. Read it. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Come on. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose. Hold up. Don't envy the oppressor. We got all these holy days from those who oppressed us. We can't envy what they're doing. Okay. Read. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. And choose none of his ways. Come on. Read it again. Uh, Proverbs 331. Envy thou not the oppressor. And choose none of his ways. And choose none of his ways. We can't envy the wicked and what they do. And feel left out. Okay? We can't choose his ways. See, they tricked us in captivity during this time. When, when, when it was real in America, real slavery. They made it where, okay, if you want some reprieve from your captivity or your slavery... You, can, you, you don't have to work, go to church on Sunday. So because that was a day of rest learned by our oppressors, we began to keep that as a tradition and worship of, of our God in appreciation for him giving us a reprieve. We began to believe that Sunday was good for us. Okay? The master would have us come and help him trim the tree every year because they wouldn't make it doing their own tree. We was trimming their trees and all that. And, and, and sometimes the master would do what? Just for that time of year. Christmas. He would do what? He would put gifts for the slaves and all that. They go get under, under the tree to get the gifts. For one time during the year, it's the master serving the servants as a tradition. So we began to believe that tradition was good. No, that's Gentile worshiping of, of, of involuntary worshiping of angels and demons. I'm going to go into it. We cannot envy the wicked. Right? The Gentiles' holy days are to devils. Right? Let's get Amos 5 and 21. Amos 5 and 21. 
Amos chapter 5, verse 21. Come on. I hate. I hate. I despise. I your, despise. Your feast days. Your feast days. So our forefathers in the Old Testament began to go off. All right. We were following the name of the holy days during the time of our Babylonian captivity. But we switched to the days of the Gentiles, the Babylonian days. This happened before Christ. So the Most High said, you know what? I hate and I despise your feast days. So if he said this about us, what do you think he feel about what the Gentiles are doing out on all their holy days? He hate and he despise them. Why? They're in reverence of Satan and Lucifer. He, he hate all of these holy days. He don't care about man's traditions and how you feel on those days. He hate them because they have nothing to do with them. He didn't give us Halloween. He didn't give us Thanksgiving. He didn't give us Christmas or Easter. None of them. He hates them. Read. I hate. I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. And I will not sm smell in your solemn assemblies. So he don't care how good your house smell when you cook it up those greens and mac and cheese. Okay? Your swine, your abomination. He will not smell in your solemn feast. Okay, when you hold hands, you might as well look down and pray to Lucifer. Okay, stop faking it. Stop faking it. Okay, if he didn't give it to you in the Bible, it's under Lucifer, it's under Satan. And when you hold your hands together in your prayer, the Most High is going to curse your prayer. Now, how do I know this? Am, am I just, am I, no. The Bible says curse not. I'm not cursing no one. This is scripture. That when you hold your hands to pray on these feast days, the Most High is going to make your prayer a curse. Let's go there real quick in the book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. exactly more, yeah. let's, let's get it. Uh, I, uh, Amos 5 and 22. Come on. Though ye offer me burnt offerings. Though you offer it to the Most High God and Christ. And your meat offerings. Come on. I will not accept them. He will not accept them. He will not accept your prayers over your food. Neither will and, I. And, and that's you in the Sunday worship. That's you in your churches. That's you with your revivals and you eating and all that. The Most High will not accept them. Because you haven't seek, seek the Lord in that Bible. You haven't, you, you haven't sought after the true God. You want a God that agrees with you. How backwards is that? You want to worship a God that agrees with you. That's backward. Read. I will not accept them, neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. He will not regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. You can get your children around. You can cry. You can say, thank you, Lord, for this bountiful feast we have in here and you're blessing our family with health and all that. You can say what you want to say. The most high God from the throne don't hear it. He's for those who seek him early. Do you really want to follow the true God? Read about him. Know him. Know his do's and don'ts. Know what he wants you to do. The only thing we can do to show we love the most high is to follow him. That's an obedient child. Okay? It's like having a disobedient child and, and accepting anything this child do against your raising him. <laughs> I'm going to accept anything you're doing in defiance of what's right. Read. 23. Take thou away from me the noise of thy song. He's not going to hear you singing either. So you notice with these seasons come what? Everyone has a new Christmas album. Boys the Men album. Whitney Houston album. Christine Aguilera. All these straight Satanists have Christmas albums. Katy Perry. A Christmas album. 
All these people that are worshiping the Baphomet with Christmas albums. Come on. For I will not hear the melody of thy vows. He will not hear the melody of thy vows. Read. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Let judgment run down. Righteousness. See? He's saying, listen, why don't you bring what I'm bringing out of the Bible? Why don't you teach what I'm showing you out of Scripture? Let judgment come down. Righteousness. Stop trying to uh, put, put a, put a band-aid. Stop trying to put a band-aid over a sore and make it everyone believe that it's, everything is fine or it's healed. Oh, look, today, yeah, it was in the spirit we sang and all that. And I'm looking at, listen, it's a shame what, what's going on in the Christian churches right now. It's a, it's, it's a dead shame. Homosexuals just took the whole thing over, running the choir. And guess what? I don't have nothing against someone who's struggling with the sin. But if someone want to be on a choir amongst this church, and we do have choirs, you're going to, you're going to have, if you are dealing with something like that, it's going to have to be a meeting where you get baptized and healed and renounce sin. Then you can lead all the choirs you want. But you're not going to be no flame operating over a choir. It's not going to happen. Where's the repentance at? See? So the Most High is not hearing these things. Come on, let's read it. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11. Come on. So what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? So what purpose is your sacrifice unto the Most High God? Saith the Lord. Come on. I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. Come on. When ye come to appear before me, who have required this at your hand? So when you come to do these holy days, these holidays, who told you to do it? Did you see a command out of the Bible to say celebrate that day? Shouldn't you have checked with God? <laughs> like okay I'm going to do Christmas today let me see if God want me to do this because it's in reverence of him so no you're just going to make your day for him and force him to accept it how backwards is that chapter and verse come on Isaiah 1 verse 12 Yeah. when he come to appear before me who have required this at your hand? Who have required this at your hand? To tread my courts. To tread my courts. Verse 13. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. Now, why did our forefathers, why did the Most High say this to our forefathers? We began to do all the holy days in the Old Testament on Babylonian dates. We began to follow the moon, which is 354 days, and, the, and, and it, would, it would totally take off the cycles of Sabbaths from year to year. That moon is not really moon there. It's month. So what they did was they would have the Passover fall on a Babylonian day like the spring solstice or Easter. We did that before Christ. See, we started doing a Passover on how Easter is worshipped today. We started just doing everything Babylonian. And the Most High said, listen, I don't want to hear it. So we have a lot of Israelites today, probably through ignorance. They just want to follow the holy days. So I'm sure eventually they'll get it. They will still follow the holy days strictly from the moon. And, and think they're following the Passover. When the Passover is on a fixed time each year. That means if it's on a, a, a Friday sundown, a Saturday sundown today, it's going to be like that next year. Every holy day fall on the same day every year, a fixed time. The earth is divided into what? Quarters. All of those quarters link up to what? Sabbaths. You have 52 Sabbaths in one calendar year. See? 
So it's a cycle. Once that 364 turns, another 364 turn. Every day falls the same from one through seven over and over and over again. We began to go off and follow strictly the moon doing Babylon and throwing off all the days and began to follow what? Pagan Gentile days. Okay, and that's really how you get your your holidays in America today. They're all ancient Babylonian brothers and sisters. Okay, Easter, Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, all of these are Babylonian. So the Most High is telling us right here during our Babylonian captivity, he will not hear our traditions. Read it. Verse 13. Come on. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. Come on. It is iniquity. It is iniquity. Sin. That means when you call an assembly outside the days the Most High gave, it's sin. Go on. And you notice a lot of our people now, who even who are Hebrews, they're looking at the Jewish people on how to worship and follow the holy days. And we know the Jewish people, can't, can't, they can't stand Christ. And their calculation is totally off. It's Babylonian. They actually worship through the Babylonian Talmud. They don't even look at the Bible and the Torah like that. They filter the Torah through what? Through the Babylonian Talmud. See? So a lot of our brothers who know their Hebrews and all that, they're going off too. They'd be like, well, the Bible says about the moon. Nah, it's the month. In the Hebrew, there's two separate words, one for month and another for the luminary moon or that great light the Most High put out there. So it's, when it says new moon, it's not saying a new moon. It's saying a new month according to the scheduled year that change each season from season to season. So there is a correct way to calculate and know what holiday, holy day to follow righteously in the Bible. I'm going to go over that briefly in a moment, but let's first deal with this. Go on. The rest of verse 13, even the solemn meeting, even the solemn meetings, verse 14, your new moons and your appointed feast, my soul hated. So God does hate. Read. They are a trouble unto me. They trouble the most high to see all these people worshiping Satan in his name. Claiming you're worshiping God. Read. I am weary to bear them. Verse 15. And when you spread forth your hands... I will hide my eyes from you. So when you hold your hands and spread forth your hands in prayer on your holidays, what will the Most High do? I will hide my eyes from you. He will hide his eyes from you. Okay, because you're worshiping Satan. Go on. Yea, when you make many prayers. And when you pray to the Most High. I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. He will not hear your prayers. And he's speaking of the pastors who is teaching the the Babylonian generational curse. Your hands are filled with blood. You're teaching the oppressive religions and traditions that keep our people and the earth in a perpetual generational curse. Okay, so guess what here? We have, let's start off, what's the next so-called holiday they have? I believe it's uh, Thanksgiving. No, the next one is Halloween, right? Halloween. October 31st. Halloween. Now let's talk about this first. Number one, this this is the time of year where children come up missing and are sacrificed to Satanists. The Western world is controlled, ran, and politicized by Satanists. Okay? Just last week on the news, they found, well, they were looking for a guy who was dressed like a clown who was in the woods 
trying to entice children to come into the woods. They need children for October 31st sacrifice. So the Satanists are doing things like this. They're dressing up like clowns and all that and acting. And one kid went, went and ran to their parents saying there's, a, there's some clowns in the woods. These are Satanists who claim they worship and follow the earth. These are pagans. And they try to lie. They, they don't care because, don't forget, these Satanists have no rules. So they make claims like, oh, well, they sacrificed in the past and there's good and there's evil witchcraft and sorcery. There's good pagans and there's bad pagans. No, don't believe the Harry Potter story. Okay, it's all evil and wicked and they sacrifice children and it's written of in the Bible that not to have our children pass under the fire. What fire? The fire of Moloch. The trick or treat, the original Celtic trick or treat, okay, led to what? Sometimes it led to you receiving something or the witches receiving the blood of the child. That's what trick or treat started with in, in its inception. When you see those stories of Hansel and Gretel, these are all pagan stories of child sacrifice. Let's read it. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 21. Come on. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire thou to Molech. Thou shalt not let any of thy seed do what? Pass through the fire to Molech. Pass through the fire to Moloch. This is what's going on when you're taking your children trick-or-treating. It's a pass through the fire of Moloch. And some children go out there by themselves without their parents and won't come back. Okay? These Satanists are killing children and drinking their blood and all that. This is real time. And I'm not speaking of just normal sadistic, what you would think sadistic people. These are regular, what you would call regular school teachers, regular politicians. At night, this is what they do. They come together under Satan. They get them a child or they'll go to one of these uh, uh, orphanages, orphanages, orphanages. Okay, they'll go to one of those and they'll find a child who par the parents don't care about them no more. Eventually, they'll, they'll deal with them and they'll kill the child. They're over orphanages. They, they, they're over boy homes. They're over all these areas of authority over children. And they get these children or they'll go just kidnap a children. Sometimes, sometimes they initiate and hire people like the Jeffrey Dahmers of the world and all them. These are really initiate killers. OK, that's under an order. And they'll go get these people to find them a child. To sacrifice that night and they won't get a child. OK, now we have here. The pagan book of days, okay, to let all of you brothers and sisters know what you're really worshiping on these days before they was called Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. The pagans had a worship or sacrifice for each day of the, week of the year in pagan Rome. Now, our people weren't pagans. Mm -hmm. We're not Romans. So when the Roman Catholic Church came over and conquered our people, the Baliqua Taino Indians and the black people and all that, they destroyed us and put us under their power. And instead of giving us our holy days, they gave us the pagan days to substitute, to stay perpetually empowered as masters over servants. The pagan book of days. Now, what's good about this is this book, you can go into the day and see what the politicians and the masons and all that truly worship on that day. And even if they give a holiday like Martin Luther King Day, they make sure it aligns with one of the pagan days they were sacrificing in ancient Rome. Like, for instance, get October 31st out of the pagan book of days. Now, they tell you that it's Halloween, just trick-or-treat, it's about candy and children. But no. It's not about that. Mm -hmm. There's always a higher worship 
involuntary worshiping of devils or angels. It's always a higher worship leading directly to Satan on these holy days. Let's get October 31st. Now check out this, this guy holding a snake on October 31st. Okay, right here. Let's read what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind, before I read this, just to give context, yeah. just to read a few uh, lines off the back. Yes. Uh, it says, pagan rites and festivals are at the root of many traditional holidays in the Western world. Mm. Embracing a sensitivity we have lost, the pagan tradition emphasizes mystical spirituality reverence for the feminine principle and the links between people and the earth. And the link between people and the earth. So certain days have certain frequencies and doorways to demons. See? So if they can make it a holiday or a tradition, then these demons that empower your politicians and your religious leaders will now have access to the population. Mm -hmm. As a form of control. See? Let's read it. Uh, this is 31st of October. What is it, what is it called? It's known as Sam Hain Eve. It's, it's, it's known as Sam Hain Eve. Halloween. Halloween. Goddess of month or goddess month of Sam Hain commences. Come on. The feast of Sam Hain marks the onset of a darker, darker, more introspective time of year when access to the other world is easier than usual. When access to the other world is easy than usual. So that day opened up a time of access to hell and the invisible dark world. Now that's the beginning of what? The season. Are you following me here? Come on. It says the Feast of Samhain marks the onset of a darker, more introspective time of year when access to the other world is easier than usual. Come on. The festival is also known as Halloween. Halloween. When witches ride abroad. Hey ho for Halloween. When all the witches are to be seen. When all the witches are to be seen. Some in black and some in green. Some in black, some in green. Hey ho for Halloween. See that? You see that? So now the witches have pulled off the druid boots and the druid hats, like you see on the pumpkin, and have acclimated themselves within society over the majority of these organizations in the earth. They're your nurses, a lot of them. They're witches. They're your administrators. Your administrators. A matter of fact, it's widely known amongst the political arena that Hillary Clinton is one of the top witches on earth. Okay? And we're talking about direct worships, uh, worshiping of Satan. So that's Halloween, right? Here's another one. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. And what they'll tell you. Well, this is a time of year that uh, you notice it's always on a Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. It's always on a Thursday. And worship of what? They say Thurston or Thor. Right? So they will tell you it's a time of appreciation for when the pilgrims and the North American Indians sat down together in agreement of worshiping a God who's appreciating both of them. The Indians gave them land and for that one day they just laid down their arms and just loved each other with a Thanksgiving feast. Hey, I don't know about you, but that's what I was taught in elementary school. So before you go there, though, let's go to the pagan days. What year, what month, what, what day of the month does it fall this November? November 24th this year, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see what the holy day, because sometimes it's between the 24th and the 26th, right? 
-hmm. So let's read the 23rd all the way through and show you how many holy days is during the time of of, 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 uh, Thanksgiving. Why? While you're worshiping Thanksgiving, the pagans or politicians are doing sacrifices on one of these days according to where they fall on the pagan Satan's calendar. Okay? Let's read the 23rd first. Uh, November 23rd, St. Clement Wayland. St. Clement's Day marks the first day of the winter in the Julian calendar. As patron saint of blacksmiths and metalworkers, Clement is an aspect of the Saxon and Norse godling Wayland the Smith. At the annual blacksmith's feast held at Burwash, Sussex, Old Clem was said to stand protectively above the tavern door. November 24th. Celtic tree month of N- Negeto ends. Celtic tree month of Nagel ends. So there's a Celtic tree month. Now, a tree also links all the way up into the Babylonian worship of Saturnalia. The tree is a prominent idol within Celtic worship. Right? Now, let's get the next one. November 25th. November 25th. Commemorates the will goddess of the underworld. The will goddess of what? The underworld. So while you're celebrating Thanksgiving around that time, the politicians and the Satanists are celebrating the will god of the underworld. They're worshiping the gods of hell. Okay? Come on. Known various variously as Persephone or Proserpina. Kore, Arianrod, and Catherine, queen of the shades, ruler of the souls of the dead. Rulers of the souls of the dead. So while you are dealing with Thanksgiving, this is what your elite powers are doing. Okay? So you're holding hands around your family and all that, and they're worshiping and drinking blood to the underworld and raping and killing children. In respect of Moloch, Satan, or Yahweh, another name for Moloch, okay? And I know the Jewish people will never tell you this out in public, but they know Yahweh is synonymous with Baal, okay? Come on. It says, it was formerly known as Women's Merrymaking Day, a festival of the celebration of women's mysteries. Of women mysteries, okay? That's... What? That's Thanksgiving. But we know what Thanksgiving really is. Thanksgiving was a time of total destruction against God's chosen people. Okay? When they, which which were the uh, Romans, came over and killed hundreds of thousands of North American Indians. It has nothing to do with God, family, tradition. Now, I have a whole story on that, but I'm going to save that for another day. But all in all, it has nothing to do with the front of family and tradition that they're giving us. It's you ignorantly participating in a satanic ritual to the underworld and in respect of the conquerors who killed your people in the Americas, who slaughtered Indians on a day in which the Indians were told to come for a peace talk. And the for one day, the Indians laid down their arms. The Romans or the Edomites came armed and slaughtered men, women, and children. And for years, every Thanksgiving, they used to have the cowboys against the redskins. Up until the majority of the population began to wake up and say, well, hold up, man. This is total disrespect. So you, you're going to just celebrate destroying and killing these people, the natives, who are Gadites? Then they began to mix it up a little bit. 
And guess what? Their slaughter is written of in the Bible, what they would do against Gad. Let's go to Genesis 49 real quick and read it. Genesis chapter 49, verse 19. Yes. Gad, a troop shall overcome him. A troop shall overcome Gad. But he shall overcome at the last. But Gad shall overcome at the last. And as you can see, this is the real Thanksgiving feast portrayed through art. The Indians came, or the Gadites came, because Indians only mean savage. That was their word for terrorists back then. They would lie and call us savages amongst the Europeans. Okay? They slaughtered our brothers and sisters, men, women, and children, on a day of feast. And every year they have you celebrating the destruction of your own people. The Bible says a troop shall overtake them. What troop overtook Gad in North America and in Canada? What troops? The U.S. Cavalry. A commission from Rome. From Edomites. Okay? But Gad will overcome at the end, according to the Bible. Let's get the one in Psalms. Come on. Psalms chapter 55, verse 20. Yes. He hath put forth his hand against such as it as be at peace with him. Everyone that was at peace with him, he have put forth, forth his arms against. Read. He have broken his covenant. He have broken his covenant. Every agreement that the so-called Edomites came and, 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 and Rome made and the so-called founding fathers and those that believe in the Constitution, every agreement you made with the North American Indians, you broke. Every one. Read. Verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Like they are now. But war was in his heart. His words were smoother than butter. butter. That's their psychology. They'll speak to you like this, all soft and, all right, well, just calm down. Yeah, yeah all right. It's, that's total psychology. They're the masters of psychology. They'll speak to you soft, convince you and all that. And really, war and death and destruction is in, in their heart. Okay? And our brothers, the Gadites, were caught out there. We believed that this was the last treaty that, we, that they would need to sign to keep some land within America, not realizing that Rome wanted it all. Okay? They were just going to move you until they move you into a box of control. One treaty leads to them pushing you further back. And another treaty, next thing you know, you, you, pushed, you pushed on a lot of land that's worth nothing with, with, with casinos. Okay? And each year, it's a shame. On the natives' lands, they have a holiday commemorating their slaughter on Thanksgiving. In reverence of the will God, they worship in the underworld. See? Why? They feel that the, Satan and those, the gods empowered them with the information to destroy their enemies. So they, they, what do they do? They make a monument and celebrate each year that God and have you participate with your own slavery and captivity and destruction. Every holy day has, has a meaning, brothers and sisters. That's what we're trying to really, really stress today. It's not just a day. There's days in which things are open and demons come in. They, all of this. And they understand how the earth works in the invisible. Okay? Every holy day has a meaning. The same way when, when we go into the Old Testament, every holy day foreshadows Christ. It's, it, all of them have meanings. To understand the holy days is to understand Christ. You, are you following me here? Come on, read it. The words of his mouth, this is verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Smoother than butter, read. But war was in his, in his heart. But war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil. Softer than oil. Yet were they drawn swords. Yet were they drawn swords, which led to the death and death and destruction of the North American Indians and their children. So when you eat that turkey, 
Understand that that headless turkey represents the headless North American Indian. Okay? When you look at that stuffing, make sure you understand that stuffing is what they used to stuff the head of the North American Indian's child to play football and kick it around for sport. Okay? When you see that cranberry, that red, that's the blood that was spilled. So even a Thanksgiving dinner is a ritual in celebration to the death of the North American Indians. The cranberry sauce is the blood spilled. A lot, see these people around the table? They're able to celebrate in an area the North American Indians had. And they're thanking their God, the God of the underworld, for giving America to them. Okay? Next, Christmas. Get it out of, out of, out of the pagan book of Rome. Uh, page 140, we're going to start with December 24th, which is the Celtic tree month of Beth commences. The, the Celtic tree month of Beth commences. The birch tree month corresponding with the Algam letter Beth is a time of purification and new beginnings. A purification and new beginning according to pagans. They told you December 24th is what? Christmas Eve. The night that, that before Mary had Christ. Total, total lies. Okay? The spring saltis of Aster. They claim that this woman came down and hatched in an egg on Easter. Easter Sunday. Aster, the mother of God. Whom people ignorantly call Mary today. And they claim that she was impregnated without an actual father in ancient Babylon. So the child came during the spring solstice, And then nine months later on Mother's Eve, December 24th, she bared the God's child. Now, this story is ancient Babylonian. It has nothing to do with the Bible itself. Okay? And, and the Bible proves it. These are the stories they gave us in Christianity to hide their true worships. See? So while you're dealing with, thinking you're dealing with Christ and Mary on December 24th, nah. They know what it really means. But spiritual people who are attached to the Bible and have some inherent connection to it, they needed to do what? Put biblical characters to their pagan worships. To entice Israelites, us, into following it. Okay? If it's biblical, then you know our people, we're very spiritual. We're connected to the Bible. If we believe it's in the Bible, then it's okay. But you didn't read the Bible. They, they tricked you. Let's see what Christmas really is. December, go ahead, December 25th, come on. This is page 141, December 25th, Christmas Day. December 25th, Christmas Day. Day. Christmas Day. What happens on Christmas Day, Elder Lawyer? The observance of Christmas contains many, many elements from a number of different religious sources. Come on. The many ceremonies and religious sources of the day make it the most important festival of the year. Make it the most important festival of the year. And combination of many Gentile pagan festivals, right? And what it links to? Saturnalia, right? Let's read December 29th, 30, and 31st. Now, there's many days and holy days of worships all between 25th and the 31st, which the Romans called Saturnalia. But the pagans have something to do on each of those days. Usually, it's a child being sacrificed. Okay? Now, let's read the 31st verse. New Year's Eve. Uh, December 31st. And, you know, and how do you know this? You notice how 
the programming for all these days is normally aimed towards children? Did you notice that? It's usually aimed towards children. Did you know that? notice that? It's not that Satan care about children. It's to entice them. To keep them in this generational traditional curse. So that they can give up their children to what? Moloch. So eventually, you'll be looking at it like, man, my children are not going to be left out. You will envy out the oppressors and look at what the world is doing and feel, man, I'm sitting here sad. Everybody's celebrating on New Year's and everybody's dealing with Christmas and you feeling left out. That's a good left out. OK. OK, no, it's best to even fast on those days than to partake. Let's read it. December 31st. Uh, December 31st, New Year's Eve, Hogmanay, Asatru, 12th night. New Year's Eve, Hogmanay, commemorates the solar divinity Hogmagog. Hogmagog. Traditional fest festivities include dressing in hides and horns of animals. And that's what they do. The elite get together and get put on those masks and horns and all that. Those are your politicians who you think you're voting in. There's no electoral system, okay? These people are bloodline of Satanist and wicked doers. Okay? It's generational. You don't elect anyone. They're Satanist, okay? Come on. Traditional festivities include dressing in hides and horns of animals, guising, burning smoke sticks, hogmanays, to ward off evil spirits, and eating special cakes. And eating special cakes, read on. At the moment of the new year, doors are opened. Doors are opened. And utensils rattle to drive off the psychic vestiges of the old year and welcome the new. I don't even want to say, they, they have a little chant up in there that people do. I'm, I, it's total wickedness, okay? Okay, they're dealing with open doors from our world to the spiritual world. And they understand this happens only a certain time of year. Okay? So what do the druids and the, the witches and the sorcerers do? They'll go to places like Stonehenge. Because they understand when the sun is at a certain angle that spiritual doors are open and all that. So they'll go there on those holy days to welcome in spirits that empower them, give them information on what to do in this earth. OK. The politicians and powers of this earth are being ruled by gods. All right. And demons. And their sacrifice. In respect of power received is you. Are you? Okay. This is high level understanding. So you may think it's just a holiday. No. This is a spiritual ritual of giving up yourself and your children to Satan. That's what holidays are. Right? Now, what do we have on holidays? Yeah. Oh, let's all get around. The Christmas tree. Oh, look at that. Deck the hall with bells of, I would call, folly. Fa la 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 la, a la la la, a, a L I E. Right? The tree is actually in the Bible. Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. O house of Israel. See, our people had a special command. Hear the words that I'm speaking to you, O house of Israel. Now, you Gentiles, you've always been worshiping Satan. Okay? You did it at the Tower of Babel. You're doing it now. So when you say it doesn't matter, why? Because you reverence and honor your traditions. Your tra traditions are Babylonian and satanic. So it doesn't matter to you. But we are people of law, honor. Okay? We're not heathens. We don't eat what we want. We don't do what we want. 
that makes us special. We love our God, the God of the Hebrews. Ahia is his name. We love his laws. See? Which do what? It makes a righteous society, a righteous world, a world of righteous laws. I'm going to show you how wicked and evil this world is. You will put down the laws of the Bible, but uphold the laws of this world. The law or the penal code within your state. You got more fear for what the government will do against you. If you break one of their laws, then the laws of God. Okay. Let's read it real quick. The Christmas tree, the Yule tree that has nothing at all to do with God or Christ. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Yeah. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. O house of Israel. Come on. Thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen. So the Most High God said, we are not to learn the way of the heathen. Heathen is synonymous with Gentiles. They'll always look to twist it into how it's okay for them to be wrong. Because they are twisted. Okay? Listen, the whole the, you, you must be twisted to your answer to everything is do as thou will. It doesn't matter. Okay? Make it an excuse to be wrong or evil for your own flesh or pleasure. That's twisted thinking. Or they are trying to philosophize. The Bible says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. You're not going to convince me that evil is good. Okay? Learn not the way of heathens. Heathens are people without rule or law. Gentiles. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. We're not going to be dismayed at the signs of heaven. We see it all the time. We see when, they, when look, one star came down and it turned and make a 180 degree turn into the earth. We're not dismayed at it because we don't follow this garbage, this alien stuff they putting on TV and believe in UFOs and all that. We know that these are angels coming into the earth. So we're not dismayed at it. Oh, UFOs, is this life on other planets? You're dismayed at it. Why? Because you don't understand the Bible. We're not dismayed at the signs of heaven. When we see things coming in, the Bible says, as the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the Son of Man be. They were marrying and giving in the marriage. So when they were coming into the earth and dealing with people and all that before the flood, they're doing it today. They're your leaders of politicians. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, the workers of evil in high places. They have a place, a habitation in the heavens, and they come right back into the earth. Okay? We're not dismayed. We know what's going on. Christ has revealed the truth. The true battle. Not with these peons that they put up as politicians or front pieces and teleprompt readers. They're not the real issue. They're not the real problem. They're just front pieces for you. Okay? The fight is on a whole nother level. We're not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the Gentiles are dismayed with them. Okay? We know what's out there. The Bible reveals it. Go on. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. The heathen are dismayed at them. They're totally ignorant to what's going out on the outside of our firmament. Why? Because they're not educated concerning the, the truth of the Bible. They disrespect and don't honor the, the understanding and the value of the Bible itself. That's why they're dismayed. They think they have the answers to everything and don't under, they don't understand anything. And if your light be darkness, like Christ said, how great is that darkness? <laughs> if you're content with being spiritually ignorant of everything, how great is that darkness? So the Gentiles are dismayed at the signs of heaven. 
Read. Verse 3. Now check this out. For the custom of the people are vain. The customs which are your traditions, your holidays, to God, they're totally vain. He could care less about your tradition, your traditions and holidays. Because none of those traditions are to the Most High God. Read. For the customs of the people are vain. What custom? For one cut of a tree out of the forest. For one cut of a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. With the axe, read. They deck it with silver and with gold. So they go cut off, cut up a, the, the pine tree, right, near the root, at the base, and they deck it with what? They deck it with silver and with gold. That's your Christmas tree. They deck it with silver and with gold. Come on. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. Nails and hammer. That it move not. That it move not. You notice each year there's a tradition in the United States where the president and the first lady decorate the tree and put a five-pointed Satan star at the top of it. It's all Babylonian. The Bible says that custom is vain. And then you have preachers and pastors who claim they're following God in Christ who are doing this before their congregations. And believe in their heart, no judgment is coming. They deck it with silver and with gold. Read. They are upright. This is verse five. They are upright as the palm tree. But speak not. But speak not. Why? Because there was an old Babylonian custom that the spirit of Nimrod would come into this tree that erected over his grave every December 25th. And in ancient Babylon, it was told to our forefathers that we must come reverence and put jewel, jewels and gold and all that under the tree. Or the spirit of would deal with us and attack us and destroy us the year going forward. See? These, you know, here's the myths that came with Babylon. So through superstition, we began to follow this evil mess. The same way they'll scare you and scare children into say, if you don't follow this satanic dude here, that something is going to happen to you. When I grew up, they said, well, listen, if you don't go to sleep, Santa going to come into your house and, and, and put pepper, salt and pepper in your eyes. I'm like, what type of terrorist is this? But what they were really doing was hiding Satan, the true God of worship during Christmas, in Santa. You unscramble the words of Santa and you have what? Satan. He's the real reason for the season. They deck it with silver and with gold. Jeremiah 10. Read. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Come on. They are upright as the palm tree, but spake not. Come on. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Go on. Be not afraid of them. Be not afraid of them. For they cannot do evil. They cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Neither also is it in them to do good. So the Most High was telling the prophet Jeremiah to talk to the people, let them know, don't fear the superstition and the aggression from the Babylonian government when it comes to this tradition. And holiday. He told us not to do it, even though the Babylonians were doing it. Don't be afraid of them. See? But now we're living in a, in a world that's, that's, that's pushing Babylonian traditions, Babylonian customs, and that's why the Bible says Babylon the great is fallen and is fallen. It's become the habitation of devils. The daughter of Babylon. So if you want to know why America it's called the daughter of Babylon. Look at the dates of the holidays and traditions you're following. It's all ancient Babylonian. The Babylonians did it. Then the Romans picked it up and called it a different name on their own. And then eventually it became what we see today as America. And all the religion is still ancient Babylon in America and the Western world. They just gave it biblical 
names. Okay? And then right after that, right after this, oh, look, right after this, right, what they'll have? Easter. Now, all these holidays, our people are peer pressured into following. If you don't do this, you're not a good parent. Okay, you're neglecting your child. What about the child? Listen, the best love you can give for your give to your child is truth. That's the greatest love you can give to them. Don't think continuing a lie is good for your children. They're not being left out. The Most High will exalt them above heathens. Teach them right from wrong now. Train up a child the way they should go. When they're of age, they shall not depart from it. But I'm going to tell you, it's really not about the children, is it? It's really about the parents' satisfaction. And keeping a satanic tradition alive amongst their children because they were lied to. Easter, the goddess of star or the goddess of fertility right after that. Instead of Passover, they have you worship this demon here, the goddess Aster. Here's the real Babylonian, a real Babylonian statue of this, this woman who's, who was supposed to have come down to earth and was part, dim, they, they claim part demigod, part angel, part woman being worshipped. And she hatched on the river Euphrates. Okay? She hatched on the river Euphrates. And that's the reason you have your children on an Easter egg hunt. And doing what? Coloring their idols. In respect to what? The goddess of fertility. You notice they aim all this towards children and make it fun? For children? They do this on purpose. It's a systematic satanic PR move. To move their satanic worships from one generation to the next. What day Easter falls on next year? Let, let, let's get it real quick. Easter 2017. Let's see the date on that. That's going to be, of course, on a Sunday. <laughs> Sunday. See how they worship the sun? Has nothing to do with Christ. And every church is going to be packed worshiping the goddess Asterisk who came to the earth and was supposed to have hatched on the river Euphrates Easter Sunday. Then a lot of these churches are going to have for the children. You know what you're going to have. An Easter egg hunt for Jesus. Okay? Then you're going to have churches this year who are going to have a a Halloween party. You might as well do it under under Jesus. Mm -hmm. Simple as the days of worshiping Satan in the churches. Right? So let's see. April what? Uh, April April 16th. April 16th is coming this year. Now, why is these dates so important? Well, you ignoring the, the, the significance of these days according to what happens within the earth when portals for demons open up to co- and connect with your politicians and your Satanist who lead, who actually leads, lead the world under him. See? And what happens is they do certain events and all that on these days. To, they, it, it empowers them over the slaves. See? Now let's read April 16th here for next year for Easter. Right? Come on. Uh, April 16th, known by its Celtic dedication as St. Padarn's Day. St. Padarn's Day. Now look at this. They got they, they got this right here. St. Padarn's Day. Now, did, 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 did they tell you anything about that? Right? Come on. Come on. On this day, it was customary to begin weeding the growing crops. Read the next one. Uh, April 17th. Read the 15th. Right uh, before 15th. that. Because they do all these in succession. 15th, 16th, and 17th. Read the 15th. April 15th. 
the old Roman festival of the goddess Tellus, often called Tellus Mater, or Mother Earth. They worship Mother Earth during that time of year. See that? Who the Bible calls the Babylonian Queen Mother of Heaven, whom the Roman Catholics call today Mary. When Mary have nothing to do with this. Christ have nothing to do with this. Read. Is to just traditionally devoted to the prayer for the continued health of our environment. Tellus is the matron goddess of all environmentalists. Environmentalists who, who are also what? They called earthers. Oh, uh, let's do something for the environment. Let's look out for the environment or the earth. These are Satanists, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're talking in code. So what they're saying for the environment, they love the environment or the earth more than people. So to save the earth, we must kill you. Do you agree with your own death? Yes, you do. If you, if you worship and follow their gods, which empower them over you, you are in agreement with your own death. Okay. Let's get that the queen mother of heaven. And Jeremiah. Ever since we started following this Queen Mother of Heaven in the Old Testament, our people has have been in want for all things. Okay, brothers and sisters, can now can you see how important this Old Testament is? It identifies our fall, why we began to fall, why we're in this condition now. The old and new work together seamlessly. All of it. If anyone tell you any part of the Bible you shouldn't deal with, get, get them out of your face. Okay? Oh, well, I don't deal with Paul. Okay, that's good. Go over there and not deal with Paul. You don't understand, Paul. You, go, you can go over there. I don't have no conversation. We're we trying to understand and deal with people who understand and love the value and the, through the volume of the whole book. We're not going to time to be debating. If you don't believe something, go somewhere else. Go, go in a circle with people who don't believe what you're, you know, because we're not falling for it. Okay? If, if you want to just deal with the Old Testament, listen, go over there. Go, yeah, go over there. If you want to deal with just the New Testament, no, this circle is not for you. Christ comes in the volume of the book. And if you understand Christ first, everything, all, let me tell you, the whole book comes to life. Okay? He's the key that unlocks the mysteries. Okay? Yeshaya, our savior. Yeshaya is his name. Okay? Now let's get the queen mother of heaven that was worshipped in the Old Testament. Only got a few more minutes here. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 44 verse 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by... A great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt and Paphras, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us, in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. Go on. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven. And to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven. And to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done. And our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. See, we are, we are Judah. We went off from the law, statutes, and commandments that was given to Moses by our God, Ahiah. And we began to sacrifice and do holidays, Babylonian holidays, to the Queen Mother of Heaven. A half a century before Christ was born. See? <laughs> So we began to worship Babylonian holy days and all that before Christ. The Romans picked up those holy days to do what? To continue that servitude and that, that, that captive spirit. So that now that one empire fell, in order for the next empire to rule over us, they had to pick up those same holy days. So that whoever controlled the Babylonian holy days controlled the slaves who were cursed under them. Do you see this? So they began to pick it up all the way to America. Because why? Since we left off to follow these days, read it. 
It says here, For then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. We didn't see any evil before worshiping the queen mother, before worshiping this satanic demon here. But go on. Verse 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven. Since we began to burn incense to the queen mother of heaven. And to pour out drink offerings unto her. That means we're dealing with our drinks and festivals now to Estar. Another name, another name for Estar? Easter. See? See the trickery? Now in order for you to follow Easter, they had to connect Christ to Easter by claiming Christ rose on Easter Sunday. Lie. It was all about the goddess of star. To have you do it on that day when what? When something opens up from the spiritual realm and enters into our realm. Keep the earth calm so that now the whole earth can participate in this demonic ritual. Okay? Has nothing to do with Christ, but they need you in the temples on Sunday nonetheless. So that the demons and the spirits can use you, enter into you, and operate with you, go home with you. See? Come on. We have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And have been consumed by the sword and the famine. So ever since we left off from following the Bible and the God of Israel, we've been consumed by the Gentiles. Now we depend on them for food. That's a famine. See? <laughs> Go on. Verse 19. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her. When we began to follow holy days under Easter or a star. Read. Did we make her cakes to worship her? We made cakes to worship her. And pour out drink offerings unto her. And poured out drink offerings unto her. Without our men. Without our men. So what is this telling us? The Babylonians aimed the worship of the holy days towards the women. A feminist movement in which women would be empowered to influence the house and keep the traditions in the house over the man. You get the woman, you got the house. So feminism didn't start in our current time. They used the spirit of feminism in the Old Testament, a half a century before Christ, to control the house and the children. And now the woman is upset if she can't celebrate certain things. And the man, what? The man will now let his guard down and eventually acquiesce to her demands to have a happy house, happy wife, happy life. Well, why can't we do it? Just one time. And then he's like, oh, okay, all right. Next thing you know, we lose, Israel is losing everything. And you notice they've aimed all these holidays towards what? Women. The women keeps the tradition. Here it is. No soon as the holidays come, the nice bells of holiday, ding, 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 snow coming down. And here it is, what? You see what? A man coming with a car with something wrapped or a man coming with a ring. Uh, go to Gerald's Jewelers. And next thing you know, she's happy. And, you, and you're looking like, man, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm dead broke. I don't know how I'm going to pull this off. See, it puts the pressure of this world on you. Come on. Uh, verse 20. Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men and to the women, and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, The incense that ye burn in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings, and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them, and came it not unto his, into his mind, so that the Lord could, not, could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings, and because of the abominations which ye have committed, therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as it is this day. See that? So because we followed those holy days, those Babylonian holy days back then, 
the Most High scattered us, according to Deuteronomy 64, into a new land. Because we did it in the past, our land is desolate and Gentiles are overrunning the Holy Land. Okay? And a lot of us, our people are making the same mistakes again. We're owning these holidays that don't belong to us. God is angry with us for this. We must forsake all of it and follow the holy days contained in the Bible. So you might ask, well, how do I follow the holy days? Right? Okay. Let me give you a few tips here. Real quick, I need you to grab... I'm going to show you how we how you do this now. I'm going to show you how you do it. Right? We follow the Passover now. Now, the Passover, now this other Christians have tricked you, right? Let's go to uh, Acts 12 real quick. Book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 1. This is how you how they've tricked people into think, into following Easter on Easter Sunday. We're taking all that away from the Christian pastors now. You, you don't have a leg to stand on. You see this video? Okay? You don't have a leg to stand on. You must now renounce all the holy days and follow the holy days according to the Bible. Or the Most High will bring a judgment like he did our forefathers. And destroy the work of your hands and take that congregation from you. And you think you're losing numbers now. Okay? You ready? Yes, Acts sir. 12 and 4, read it. Acts chapter 12, verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he brought him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter... To bring him forth to the people. After Easter to bring him forth to the people. So you'll read this and believe Easter is in the Bible. So this happened during modern day publications, brothers and sisters. This word wasn't there at first. In the Greek, it's what? Pasach or what? Pascha. Passover. Okay, let me get it. Hey, grab me my Bible dictionary over there real quick. I got it right here. It's in that box right there in the front. Mm -hmm. how, listen, I can show you right now. I got all my books now. Right here. Come on. Oh, he's getting that. Uh, you can read verse 3. It says here, And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So Christians won't even understand that this is not speaking of Easter. You must go to the Leviticus 23 in the Old Testament and see the days of unleavened bread begins with what? The Passover. Who's Christ? Christ is the Passover lamb. Okay. One moment. Let me get the Bible dictionary real quick. Okay, pick it up from where we left. Let me get Easter out of the Bible dictionary. Now, we all know that the New Testament is translated out of the Greek, right? Why was it translated out of the Greek? Well, that was a time in which our people were scattered and controlled by the Edomites, the Greeks and Romans, and started taking on their languages. So when Christ was on the scene and the disciples were on the, the scene, when Christ was speaking, they would scribe in both languages. Okay, during the time in which the Bible was compiled, there was more Greek fragments uh, intact opposed to the Hebrew fragments. So during the time of King James, he used the Greek 
because there was more of that information intact. Now, let's get Easter out of the Bible dictionary. I say we're going to take you to school to, to, to school today, right? <laughs> All right. Easter. All right, let me get it here. Okay, Easter, all right, right, right here, Easter, right, I'm going to highlight it, but I'm going to have Elder Lawyer read it first, and then I'll show you the highlight, read it. Easter, Passover. Easter is what? Passover. So the word Easter wasn't even supposed to be there. Okay? They put it there to have people ignorantly worship the goddess a star. Now, some people might ask, well, if they put that there and change that, then why should I believe anything? Well, the context of the scripture is correct. So I'm not going to throw out the Bible because they changed one word. Because it says those were the days of unleavened bread. Any brother or sister is studying the Old Testament and holy days know that Passover is the first day of what? Unleavened bread. So the context is correct. But they injected one word to satisfy those who are worshiping the goddess, a star. See that? Easter is what? Easter, Passover. Go on. Rendered Easter in Acts 12 and 4 KJV, but correctly translated Passover in ASV. See that? They rendered it. It's rendered Passover. They took it out and put the word Easter there. After this demon right here. Let me show you, show it to you. Now, one other point I want to go over real quick. Okay. One moment. Bring you here to my board. <laughs> right? One moment. I'm going to bring you all here to my board to show you a few things. Shapat, pull this out for me. Thank you. All right, excellent. This is, this is excellent. This is excellent here. All right, why am I bringing you here, brothers and sisters? I want to show you all something. Right? I want to show you all something here on the board. I told you I'm bringing you to school today. Right? Holy days, right? You have the Jewish people dealing strictly with the moon, shades of the moon. They deal with shades of the moon. Either a sliver of the moon or a full moon or you would see something like this, a half moon. They deal with the moon. Why? Because that was Babylonian worship. The moon is Babylonian worship. The moon is Babylonian worship. Now, why am I saying this to you today? Well, brothers and sisters, the majority of your holidays, Celtic, Jewish and all that strictly deal with the moon. But that's an issue. It throws off all the holy days of the year. It does. Why? Well, I need you to get that real quick. Yeah. Why does it throw off the holy days? This is why. The moon gives you a yearly count 
a lunar count per year, 354 days. 354, let me get it here. 354 days. Okay? Now, what's wrong with this? You know that even our calendars, even though they're off, right? Our calendar is about 365 days. So they'll vary it, leap year, and do whatever they want to do because they're not following the years according to Sabbath. The Gentiles did this on purpose. Daniel 7 and 25 says that they should think to change time and laws. Who are the they? The Romans. At one time, they, they messed up the calendar so bad to a point where they had to move from September and move it to January. Okay? So you can't go with the Gentiles. Remember, the Most High said that he would put a foolish nation over us. It's utterly ridiculous to try to make a year to follow holy days from the moon. Thank you. It's utterly ridiculous. Why? You can't get seven into 354. And each year is calculated through Sabbaths. So if you have 52 Sabbaths, I'm going to show you how you get your holidays now. You can't go by the moon, but the Jewish people, the sages, use the moon. Where did they learn that from? They learned that from the Jewish or the Babylonian sages who were worshiping the moon. The moon god in Egypt was called who? The moon god in Egypt was called Yah. The moon god in Egypt was called Yah. Which means this name was revealed and worshipped in Egypt before the Israelites received God's name. Okay? Under Moses. So it's, it all goes back to the moon and there's a reason for that. Right? Now. A bit more room there. Excuse me. Now. The regular cycle of the year is what? 364. The Most High God said, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Seven. Remember the Sabbath. Why? Because from year to year, you will be able to calculate the holy days. And through that, understand the prophecies, how Christ is fulfilled in those days. Seven would be our marker from year to year. How many times does, does seven goes into 364? It goes into 364 52 times. 52 weeks makes a complete year. 52 weeks make a complete year. Five and two. Five plus two. Seven. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. 52 weeks, 364 days. And if you follow this, you'll never vary off of seasons. When the Most High gave us this understanding of equal parts night and day for the last day of the year, we've been right on ever since then, and the seasons change like clockwork right on time, and all of the holy days fall on the same day each year. So we're following the Passover that Christ followed, the disciples followed, and not dealing with the moon, which takes everything off course back into Babylonian worship. So what does this, this mean, brothers and sisters? Well, this means that even people who call themselves Hebrews and Israelites and follow the Passover, they're still worshiping a Babylonian God and worshiping Babylonian holy days. Right? Now, 
Now, pass me that real quick. Just hold it up for me, Shapat, if you don't mind. Right here. Um, it's okay. One moment. Good. Is it holding? My brother, my brother. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit. I said we're having class today, right? Let me zoom right up in there, right? Come on. One moment. Zoom right up on there. So what are, what are you looking at here, brothers and sisters, you might ask? Well, you're actually looking at the correct calendar. The correct calendar, right? I'm going to zoom in real good so you can see what's going on here. When you look at the correct calendar, brothers and sisters, what you see? You see that the new moon is not a moon. It's actually a point for a quarter of a year going into a new season. You got a new moon, which is new month here. New moon, which is new month here. New moon, which is new month here. And new moon, which is new month here. What does this mean? That means a new month started here that brought in the springtime. Right? That brings in the summer, autumn, and winter. And it's broken down 364 days. Certain months have 31 days. These are the months that lead into what? The change of season. You do it like this and everything comes in right on point. You need no leap years. You don't need no daylight savings time. You don't need to try to readjust your calendar. Nothing. This is the most highs correct count for a year in Sabbaths. If you don't follow the Sabbaths, it'll put off all the holy days. So what did the Babylonians and the Gentiles do? They said, you know what? We need to point now to the moon because automatically the moon, if we do it on the, on the moon, each year the holy days will fall on different days and the Israelites by default will not know how to worship their God of the Old Testament. And by doing so, we being the, the, the Gentiles will continue our rule over them. Do you understand what we're showing you here? So this calendar that was put together, brothers and sisters, Gave us all the holy days and everything right on point from year to year. The Most High revealed this information so that if we're going to follow the holy day, it's going to be on the day the Most High gave us from the beginning in honoring his Sabbaths. Okay, we're, we're back here. All right. Okay, we are back. Now, last but not least, let me show you the scriptures concerning that real quick. We're going to go to the book of Jubilees. 
Now, in the book of Jubilees, it broke down. Now, this is information the Romans don't want you to see, okay? The Most High showed Moses more than what we have in the first five books. He gave him information to hide and information to declare to Israelites. It tell you that in 2 Edges, the 14th chapter of your Apocrypha. That's the reason the Romans don't want you to read the Apocrypha, okay? They, they don't want you to know there's other information that, 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 that will actually free you from the Roman imposition against us, okay? Now, let's go. In the book of Jubilees, it tells us about what will happen if we begin to follow the moon. Now, the Jewish people, check. The Jewish people follow the moon and the Babylonian Talmud on purpose. They are Talmudists. They're Satanists. When it says that they shall think to change time and laws, Jewish people are Romans, okay? It was them who, who would do this so that we can now follow their holy days. Us being Israelites, when we follow their holy days, our God is angry at us, okay? They're not required to do what we're doing. They don't suffer the same punishments we suffer for breaking God's law. That's the reason the Gentiles tell you over and over again, it doesn't matter. Okay? Let's read it, Elder Lawyer. This is the book of Jubilees. Hold up. Uh, Jubilees chapter 6, verse 22 through 23. For I have written in the, first, in the book of the first law, in that which I have written for thee, that thou shouldest celebrate it in its seasons. Celebrate it in its seasons. One day in the year, and I explain to thee its sacrifices that the children of Israel should remember and should celebrate it throughout their generations in this month, one day in every year. One day in every year, read on. And on the new moon of the first month. The new moon of the first month, that means the new month, not the new moon outside. Because moon in Hebrew is different than the moon you see outside. And the Jewish people know this. It's not speaking of the actual circle moon. It's speaking of the word month, which only comes in after equal parts night and equal parts day for the last day of the year. And then it'll start a cycle of seven again. Now, I've, I've taught this on previous uh, uh, lessons. So you can go into the secrets of the times lesson and you'll see clearly it's not speaking of the moon outside. And, and Jubilees tell, tells us why. Read. On the new moon of the first month, and on the new moon of the fourth month, and on the new moon of the seventh month, and on the new moon of the tenth month are the days of remembrance, and the days of the seasons, and the four divisions of the year. The four divisions of the year, the same way I showed on this calendar right here. It shows the four divisions of the year. You cannot have an equal divide of seven if it's under a regular moon. So you should move that word from moon to month there. The Jewish people who had control of our records put moon there. and They know it was talking about a division of months. Read. These are written and ordained as a testimony forever. Forever, read. Jumping down to verse uh, 32. In fact, verse uh, 28. And on this account, he ordained them for, for himself as feast, for a memorial forever, and thus are they ordained. And they placed them on the heavenly tables, each had 13 weeks from one to the other, from one to another past their memorial, from the first to the second, and from the second to the third, and from the third to the fourth. Come on. And all the days of the commandment will be 52 weeks of days. 52 weeks of days, according to the book of Jubilee. Everything is broken down in seven. So the year will give you 52 weeks. Remember the Sabbath. Because in the Sabbaths, you remember also holy days. So if the Bible says the Passover is on the first month, the 14th day, well, you will know when the first month came in from the regular calculation of Sabbaths. And it's not the equinox. They, they totally distorted the information on the equinox. As a matter of fact, there was a, a, a report on this on, in one of their magazines, National Geographic, that, that they've purposely 
distorted the equinox on purpose to link in with the Sunday goddess of a star. They don't give you the equinox based on equal parts night and day like Jubilee's command. Okay? Go on. Thus it is engraven and ordained on the heavenly tables and there is no neglecting this commandment. So that means it's already recorded in the heavens. So therefore us and earth cannot neglect this commandment. Because the... The heavenly tabernacle on earth was a similar to, to the tabernacle in heaven. So all of these celebrations and holy days were first in the heavens being done. So even though you're celebrating all these days that the Most High have nothing to do with, the angels in the Most High is still with Christ performing the holy days in the heavenly tabernacle, right according to the cycle that was given to Moses, that was given to Enoch. That was given to the prophets. See? So you notice Satan have certain days in which portals are open to deal with hell and his gods. Well, guess what? The most I have certain days that are open and open or open in where, where the spirituality is coming from heaven that you miss for following Satan's holy days. See, Satan just copy what he learned from the God of all gods. So we're missing that opening of spirituality and understanding by ignoring his Sabbaths and holy days according to when it's done in heaven. Are you following me here? Come on. Verse 32. And command thou the children of Israel. He commanded our people, the children of Israel. That they should observe the years according to the reckoning 300 and 64 days. We should make sure our year is 364. Irregardless of what the Gentiles is talking about. Look, look at the calendar of the Chinese people and, and Japhetic people. They somewhere probably in 4,000 by now. Because they don't follow the Sabbaths. <laughs> okay. You don't. Have, the most high is so perfect in a year. He don't need no daylight saving time. Leap year and all that. They're doing this to try to resolve the fact. That Jewish people and Romans have, have ignored the most high Sabbath. See, the Sabbath was given to us as a sign between Israel and the father. And through that, we can be right back on course with the most high's holy days and the prophecies concerning Christ is coming. No man know the day of the hour, but Christ says we cannot be ignorant of what we cannot be ignorant of the season. So, so there's a time schedule for Christ. If you're on the time of Sabbath according to the Most High. See? Go on. And these will constitute a complete year. These will constitute a complete year. And it makes perfect sense that the Most High would set time on earth and prophecy according to Sabbaths. If Israel remember the Sabbaths, we're right on time with him. We're right in connection with the Most High and the heavenly tables. See? Go on. And they will not dis disturb it or disturb its time from its days and from its feast. Come on. For everything will fall out in them according to their testimony. And they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. So if you do it through Sabbaths, you will not disturb the feast or the Passover and the holy days. See? So now I don't have to worry about looking up each year to a moon and see when to follow the Passover or the holy days. I don't have to do that because it's wrong looking at the moon for this anyway. Go on. Verse 33. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then will they disturb, then they will disturb all their seasons and the years will be dislodged from this order. And the years will be dislodged from this order of time. Read. And they will disturb the seasons and the years will be dislodged. Come on. And they will neglect their ordinances and all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the paths of the years and will forget the new moons and the seasons and Sabbaths. Go on. And they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. For I know and from henceforth shall I declare it unto thee. And it is not from my own devising, for the book lieth written before me. 
and on the heavenly tables, the divisions of days is ordained. So the seasons and all that is ordained on the heavenly tables for a 364 day cycle, period. It's not 0.1, 0.2, or in all that 0.4, 364.5, no. The divisions is seven. The time is seven. The prophecies is seven. The jubilees are seven. Remember the Sabbath. Read. Lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles after their error and their ignorance. What's, what's, what's walking after the Gentiles and their ignorance? For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon. They will make observation of what? Observations of the moon. They will begin to do what? Make observations of the moon. They will begin to make observations of the moon. The shaded, the slither, the, the, the full moon. They will begin to do what? Make observations of the moon. They will begin to make observations of the moon. See? They would begin to use the moon for calculating a year. The Most High warned us of this in Jubilees. He told Moses, you tell the Israelites, stay with the Sabbaths. Because this is how we calculate everything. Passover, holy days, even counting years. And the years were important to, to remember and understand because there's a certain amount of years, according to Sabbaths, Satan will have to rule this earth and to show scorn against God's people. All of this is linking with a prophecy that will end the Gentiles' rule. But we must first fall under the grace of the Most High and his times and his seasons and holy days. This is when now the Most High communicate with us. See? And it, and it tells you when the desolation of abomination is on us, that we must be what? In the holy place with the Most High. People look at that as a certain location, a geographical location. Yes, there would be a wilderness area, but brothers and sisters, it's talking about being right in line with the Most High during this time. We can't be following holy days and all this on the Gentiles when, when the Gentiles are coming against us to destroy and kill us. We must be under the hedge and protection of the Most High by doing what? Reckoning all of the holy days through his Sabbaths. Under Christ. No longer under Moses. Okay? Read on. Now it disturbeth the seasons and cometh in from year to year ten days too soon. Ten days too soon. Read. Verse 37. So it'll come in what? Ten days too soon. So if you follow the moon each year, the phases of the moon ends 354 days. Which means you'll have more years tacked on through time if you follow the moon. See that? When did we begin to follow the moon? When we begin to follow the goddess of star in Babylon. When we begin to follow the Babylonian understanding because they was worshiping and following the moon. Same thing with the Arabs. All of their religion and, and holy days and all that links directly under the luminaries. That's why they have the star and the crescent moon. Can't do that. It's off. Okay. Read on. Verse 37. For this reason, the years will come up upon them when they will disturb the order and make the abominable day the day of testimony. They're going to make an abominable day a day of testimony. And an unclean day a feast day. And an unclean day a feast day. And that's why they set up the moon under the Jewish Judaism religion. To make an abominable day the Passover. So when they do it, they're not following the Passover. Okay, they, they're lying, they're evil, they're wicked. They're just naming it or calling it the Passover, but they're off course if it's not on course with the, the times of the month according to Sabbaths. So give me that again real quick. That's one of the main reasons through the spirit of the Most High 
we did a calendar. Okay, that's why we did it, so that you can calculate it yourself and not under the Julian calendar, the Romans. Let's do it according to Sabbath so you'll know exactly when the holy days follow. And you know what? You can get this, gatheringofchrist.org. Okay? That's why we did it. So that you can be right on schedule with the holy days. So I know when we did the memorial blowing of the trumpets, that was really the first day of the month. Okay? The seventh month, according to the 364-day cycle. And it was being done where? In heaven the same time. Okay? Not according to the moon. All right? Come on. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony. Make an abominable day a day of testimony. And an unclean day a feast day. And an unclean day a feast day. And they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean, and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. Mm. For this reason I command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death thy children will disturb them so that they will not make the, the year 364 days only. He says through time the children will begin to go off and not make a year 364 days only. Now, that's common sense. It's just common math. If we know it's 364, the 14th day of that year will fall on what? The second Sabbath. So each year, the Passover begins Friday sundown. Next year, it'll be Friday sundown. Every holy day will be at a fixed time so that you don't, you're not confused. It's really quite that simple. Remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy because all of the holy days start with what? The beginning of the year and then the Sabbaths. Leviticus 23, the holy days. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. On the 14th day is the Lord's Passover. That's the second Sabbath. You count seven Sabbaths from that, which is penny, 50. You get what? First fruits. <laughs> See that? So all through the year, you're following the Sabbaths in that 364-day cycle and getting every holy day right. At the same time, it's being uh, uh, executed and worshipped and honored on the heavenly tables. What did we show you today? What we're showing you is Satan has mimicked Christ. And the most high within the earthly realm by doing it on certain days in which portals are open from hell to connect with him. Well, our holy days does the reverse. Satan know there are certain times in which information is extolled and given from the heavenly, the heavenly throne. The heavenly throne directly to us. He knows this. If we follow those days, and that's how information and truth and wisdom come into the earth. And the most high abrade if not, because we're right on schedule when it's given. Now, I'm not saying that other times it's not given, but there's greater times of, of a spiritual connection than others. All right. And it is. Or the most high would not have told us to remember it. Okay. Go on. Uh, the rest of verse 38. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons and feasts and Sabbaths and festivals, and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. See that? We'll start eating pork, shrimp, crab, lots of wishes start going off altogether. And that's why the Most High said in the Bible, I hate and I despise your feast days. Right. So that concludes our lesson for today. I wanted to just bring it real live, real, you know, make it more of a classroom setting today. We don't usually do this, but I wanted to do this today for you all and also put out some information so that brothers and sisters can pray, pray and reflect on this information so that pastors and 
preachers and those that have congregations can sit and go over this information and bring it to your congregation and, and free them and free them from their captive from their captive state. Excuse me. Okay? And free them all together from it. Pastors, preachers, we need you to look at this information and free our people from Sunday worship. Also, Muslims, we need brothers and sisters to walk out of that because they don't even deal with the Sabbath at all. They do it from Friday morning to Saturday morning. The Muslims and the Christians have set it up on purpose. They set up their religions to dishonor Christ and dishonor the Most High Sabbath on purpose. All right? Now, there's a few other things that, that I want to bring forth today, some announcements, okay? Now, the first announcement is for those who are in the academy for the 25th of September, you don't have to worry about uh, 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 anything getting in the way because it's, it's the beginning of the tabernacle during that time. You're not going to miss anything. We've already resolved the fact that it's going to be on the first week of uh, tabernacle. So don't worry about it, okay? Just if you're looking to enroll, enroll. You receive all the information to do so. It's going to work out fine. So don't worry about it. So if you, so don't worry about the first week. We're going to make sure everything is fine for you. That has already been resolved, okay? Now, for those who haven't been in the academy, this is an example on a small scale, really, of of what you receive. Real classroom teachings on different topics, okay? This year is going to be special, okay? And I say, when I say this, this year, I'm speaking of from the Holy Day year, because we're beginning on the first month with six new lessons, and I want to go over it with y'all real quick. And uh, what we do in this academy, brothers and sisters, is not just do class, okay? We have what you would call Hebrew 101 with Elder Lawyer, who bring you into the, you know, the Hebrew step by step, not the, this Yiddish you see today, it's more so the ancient Phoenician, and give you the basis and foundation of being able to actually read the Hebrew, know the Hebrew, speak the Hebrew, and on top of that, you can compare that with the Bible, and sometimes you can look at the Bible words, and you can see the similarity in Hebrew to be able to look at English and know the Hebrew word. A lot of you don't know this, but English were created by our people to get us away from the, the satanic Latin. We were the original England. England means angel's land. English is angel's tongue. So we created that language to get away from the pagan Rome Latin. So also right after that, we have a news segment. OK, with Shapat and myself, where we resolve the news real time and really tell you what the news is saying outside of your circulations and publications. OK, it's real time. I have no idea what Shapat is going into, but I give my real time reaction to the news. OK, and we both just discuss how this will have an impact on our people, on the just, the just the righteous, and what we need to do prepare, to prepare because this news is really codes of the elite communicating on where they, they are according to time and their depopulation program. So we use the news for that. We're going to also, I'm working on it now because this year, I mean this particular quarter, excuse me, I keep saying year, this particular quarter for this academy, we're going to have some giveaways because brothers and sisters have been in the academy some multiple times. So we're going to have time in between some of the space to be able to bring people on Skype and give their testimony and be able to send certain things like different books. I have I went and bought some Zondervan Bible dictionaries, some pictorial dictionaries. I did a few things so that we can have some giveaways to give you different books and all that. We can't give it to everyone, but we're going to make it in a way in which we can spread it out and have, have some giveaways during the academy. Right after those things, okay, uh, we're going to have what you would call a, a Bible lesson. Now, we work around the clock and have 
administrators working around the clock to make sure you get your PDFs, the time, the schedules, everything within it. And we went through great length to make it better technically this time. OK, so we, we will not have our prior issues as far as technical goes. And we're all in the same, you know, we're all working together instead of bringing people in from different locations. So we're going to do that. Make sure it's good for you going forward. The other thing I wanted to mention, according to the academy, is for those who've been in the academy more than twice, we're going to make it real good for you. You, you, you only got, have to pay half of what you normally pay. You know what it is. And it helps us deal with the work. And through that, we're able to give back and do things which empower our, you know, our church and brothers and sisters within the work because there's a lot of things that brothers and sisters are doing that can really, like I, like, like I went through it uh, last Wednesday, uh, talking about the books and the, uh, the, uh, the children books and the classes and the, 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 the garments people are making. So we want to make sure we set up brothers and sisters to be able to be self-sufficient. So a lot of this helps with that, all right?